Okay, good morning everyone. A very warm welcome to Maison de Sport and the second day of the ISTS 2019 client team project presentations. Uh, I'm Michael Broadley, uh, Head of Education at the Academy. And today we will see uh, four presentations by our participants in the Masters of, of Advanced Studies in Sports Administration and Technology. Over the last uh, seven months they've been conducting in-depth research uh, into a particular topic for a client <coughs> in the world of sport. Uh, the format uh, for the presentations will have 20 minutes maximum for the presentation itself and then fielding 15 minutes of questions from the evaluation uh, panel sitting in front of me or quickly introduce. We have uh, Dr. David Atienza from uh, the EPFL and also a uh, member of the ISTS Scientific Committee. We have Dr. Claude Stricker, Executive Director of ISTS. Uh, Dr. Daniel Oyon from the Faculty of Economics uh, and Business at the University of Lausanne, and also Chairman of the ISTS Scientific Committee. We have Dr. Boris Gojanovic, who is the uh, Medical Director at the Swiss Olympic Clinic for Performance and Health, and also the Head of the Medicine Module uh, at the ISTS. We have Dr. Lauren Rivier of Rivier uh, Consulting and Scientific Advisor to the ISDS. And Margareta Baddeley will join us uh, uh, for the 10 o'clock session. Uh, she's from the uh, University of Geneva, uh, from the Faculty of Law. So this morning uh, we kick off with the uh, IOC presentation where they've been looking at the impact of the Athlete Commission strategy on the NOC and IF decision making. And it's my great delight to welcome uh, Chantal Busque, who is a senior project manager from the sports department at the IOC. Great that you can be with us uh, this morning. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, we're very much looking forward to your presentation, and I hand you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And uh, welcome to our team project presentation. Uh, we're honored to represent AISTS. And not only uh, we're representing AISTS, but we're also representing our different backgrounds. Uh, we come from very uh, different landscapes. And this diversity uh, has helped uh, better understand and contribute to this international project. So to give you a little bit of a taste of um, this project, as you know, our client is the IOC, and in particular, the Athlete Commission that gave us the mandate to assess their, the impact of their strategy uh, launched and approved by the executive board in 2017. And in particular, um, they wanted us to assess the impact of the Athletes Commission strategy in the National Olympic Committees, NOCs, and International Federations, the uh, Thanks to a great collaboration with the IOC, uh, we could access the 2019 International Athlete Forum to deliver our project. So if we take a, look, a closer look to what's the IOC Athletes Commission strategy, the Athletes Commission strategy is based in uh, four main roles uh, or four main responsibilities, uh, which are divided in, uh, in two roles uh, with the athletes that are empower athlete participation uh, within the um, Olympic movement decision-making process and to support athlete development in their sporting and non-sporting careers. The other two roles are with the Olympic movement and are promote athlete involvement and to ensure athlete representation. So these uh, four responsibilities uh, turn naturally into four specific uh, goals that the IOC Athlete Commission has. And these uh, goals that are the goals that we're assessing as part of the, this strategy. All the athletes representatives are empowered uh, through a worldwide network of uh, effective athlete commission that the athletes are equipped with the right tools to develop their, their sporting and non-sporting careers. And as well that the value uh, of the athlete involvement is recognized uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the Olympic uh, movement stakeholders. And at, uh, at last but not least, uh, that the viewpoint of the athletes is uh, truly represented, so that their voice is, is truly represented. So as I said before, uh, we used the International Athlete Forum 
This is a forum uh, held by the IOC every two years uh, with more than uh, 350 athlete representatives this year. And the goals of the forum, uh, of the IOC with this forum was to empower the athlete representatives to create excitement and to create this uh, global network to better represent the, the athletes. So in this forum they had the opportunity to listen from different experts uh, such as uh, IOC uh, sports uh, director Kit McConnell talking about the, the tools that the athletes have like uh, entrepreneurship tools they have for uh, transitioning after their athlete's career uh, and also different uh, experts uh, like WADA, uh, scientific uh, expert, medical experts and a good thing they had is they could raise their voice, they could challenge these experts, they could share their, their opinion and uh, as well they had breakout sessions the idea of the breakout sessions was to to join all the, these athlete representatives and uh, create these uh, roundtables to share their knowledge, their, their best uh, practices. So they could, uh, into smaller groups, uh, they divided into smaller groups and they could uh, share all this information. Uh, why was the International Athletic Forum so important? Uh, athlete representatives from 37 IS, uh, 185 NOCs, and uh, 13 uh, recognized IFs, uh, among other uh, stakeholders for the athletes. So that was our focus, uh, uh, assess the strategy in NOCs and IFs. So it was the perfect opportunity to be there, to talk to them, and to, to listen to uh, all their, their opinions and what they, they had to tell us. Uh, so how we do, did we did uh, this project, how we carried it? Uh, we did a mixed method approach with our first phase gathering uh, quantitative uh, data. Uh, we did it through surveys uh, and thanks to the collaboration with the IOC we could uh, send this uh, surveys with the invitations for the Athlete Forum. And uh, this uh, data was presented at the Athlete Forum uh, and then came the second phase. The second phase was uh, we conducted interviews in the Athlete Forum. We could uh, talk to these athlete representatives and then, then report as well all the findings. And the third phase was uh, understand how the qualitative data supported the quantitative data and with this we could uh, write the report and uh, write a set of nine recommendations. So now I'm going to give the floor to Ivo that's going to explain the quantitative part. Thank you, Guillermo. Um, for the quantitative results, we sent out four surveys. These four surveys were sent out to NOCs uh, with athletic commissions and those without athletic commissions, and to international federations with athletic commissions and those without athletic commissions, to analyze and get a bigger picture about how the IOC strategy is working. Um, some of the things that we targeted were the quintessential themes of the IOC, AC strategy, and that of the sports department. We saw Athlete 365, Athlete 365 Career Plus, also the IOC stra I I uh, AC strategy, IOC AC strategy. From there, we targeted a couple of themes that came out. The impact of the IOC AC strategy, the participation of those ACs, um, as well as the IOC tools, and then the future of the ACs themselves. So as we see here, when we ask the questions of the awareness of Athlete Thieves of Five Career Plus, which is essentially um, a tool or a program used to help transition athletes from their sporting careers <coughs> to the non-sporting careers, which is one of the quintessential thing, themes of the IOCAC and the sports department itself. We see that the awareness is 78%, which is quite high, and that means it's reaching a global spe uh, specter around the world. Um, and then we see the NOC's awareness of Athlete 365 Career Plus, even higher, with 88%. Um, this is a positive impact that the strategy has implemented, and it's going towards a trending upwards, upward trend. Then we moved on to the other IOC tools, such as the NOC's the awareness of the IOC AC strategy, um, and those NOCs with that ACs, if they're aware of Athlete 365. As I said, Athlete 365 is the platform that is used to help athletes themselves, where they can come in in a forum, participate, learn about the new documents that are being uh, published by the IOC themselves. And then we have the IOC AC strategy, which is a new strategy, all in, which is the, the strategy we are ana analyzing ourselves. As you can see, 
that we have 73% that are aware of the IOC strategy and with the NOCs, and the NOCs that don't have an AC, they have 90%. These are very, very high numbers, um, which is also another global reaching that the strategy itself is being reached continentally and globally. Then we moved on to the participation. Um, this is key, because without the athletes, well, there is no sport. Without the athletes, we wouldn't be here today, right now. Um, so we want all athletes to participate in the global forum. What we looked at was the continental forum, which is divided into, for, for instance, Europe, Latin America, uh, North America. Um, and these continental forums bring people together because it's very difficult to bring everyone together internationally every year. So these continental forums help promote the IFC strategy and help uh, build a global network, which is one of the goals of the IEC. So we can see for the continental forums of participation, we have an 84%, almost 85% rate. Um, this is very high, which is very important because it means we're having a round, round table discussion where everyone can participate and discuss. When we look at the willingness to participate in conference calls, this is the easiest way for everyone to come together. The conference calls um, help people come together to discuss all around the world, which helps build a bigger network and a wider, uh, <coughs> wider network of strategies. Then we moved on to the impact. Um, the International Federation's AC is positive impact on athlete representation. As I said before, without the athletes, we wouldn't be here. Um, the representation is extremely high. We have almost a 93% rate, um, which is what the IOC is striving for. Then we moved on to the future of the ACs, because the commissions, one of the ma major themes is we want the commissions to grow. We want athlete representation to grow. So we looked at those NOCs without ACs and what their intention is. And then we looked at what their opinions of having an AC and the impact. We can see here that within, within the next three months, we have a 45% rate that they want to create an AC. Um, and then the NOCs without ACs, their opinions of creating ones are extremely high. We can see here, 4.45% in their opinion, would it help? And in your opinion, how beneficial would the AC be in representing your athletes in the wider Olympic movement? An average of 4.64. And then we moved on to the qualitative section. Uh, entering into our qualitative survey base, uh, our team tried our best to reach out and include and interact with as many different countries, uh, the NOCs and International Federation, including those without the athletes commissions during the International Athletes Forum. And these are the numbers that show uh, how many uh, different uh, participants we uh, communicated with, including those thanks to the IOC where we had the opportunity to participate in uh, uh, the different breakout sessions that was presented earlier. Um, inc incorporating all this information that we qu acquired for our qualitative survey, uh, we then were able to find the overarching issue trends uh, based on our uh, research uh, analysis, including access and awareness, athletes engagement, and governance. They're not separate words, but they're rather uh, incorporated into, uh, they're mingled together. So I'll explain in the next slides how they're all connected to each other. In terms of access and awareness, a lot of athletes had uh, similar concerns over how these financial resources they're getting funded uh, through the NOC were distributed to their uh, athletes commissions directly. They did not know simply where those uh, money went and how to access this. Uh, and so and so, the, the language barrier was another issue based on this access. Not being able to use this uh, resource uh, appropriately and properly, they weren't able to acquire, uh, receive, retrieve information they wanted to have uh, using uh, different languages that are available to them. Uh, for example, IOC has English and French working language. Uh, therefore, not being also, it's like a domino effect, then they were not able to connect with uh, have a direct contact with different uh, stakeholders like different NOC representatives or international federations. As an example, uh, for example, one of the international federation uh, wanted to have a host uh, training program which required 25 different languages. Um, but it was only one uh, staff working on this project that, who could not speak 25 languages, obviously. Um, therefore, did not, I wasn't able to connect with uh, different uh, representatives and the different st uh, stakeholders they required. However, if the resources are uh, properly uh, distributed and they know how to access, an example with the Argentina uh, National Olympic Committee, they were able to translate their uh, own versions of the existing resources provided by the International Olympic Committee 
into their language and their cultural context to develop an effective at least mission. Not only, only keeping themselves, but also spreading to uh, neighboring uh, South American countries like the Uruguayan NLC. Uh, next, it then connects to the, uh, they had a set of pri uh, highest priority on the athletes' engagement. To have a better access and awareness, they thought uh, highly of uh, better engagement and interaction with national federations, either it be athletes to athletes, but also bringing in different uh, public uh, perspective outside of sport. Uh, they praised highly during the International Athletes Forum the Athlete 365 network application. It was a mobile uh, application where they could download freely and participate uh, in their own time in the digital space, <coughs> discuss uh, what they want to under the uh, relevant topics, participate and create a group session if they uh, want to. However, when they went back home, they wanted to bring this uh, variety of ideas to their home in a more closed uh, closer and uh, as close as smaller as uh, regional or localized uh, forums that imitates the International Athletes Forum they uh, experience, including the public's opinions. And these all leads to and connects to the better governance. Uh, <clears throat> with the existing resources uh, the IOC provides, as I said earlier, they did not have uh, uh, simply no knowledge of uh, accessing these uh, resources, either be financial or the tools the IOC provides. So they thought the importance of the education, the transfer of knowledge in the interest of athletes. Uh, therefore, some of the, it was more prominent amongst the smaller uh, NOC or the International Federation uh, Athletes Commissions or those without Athletes Commissions. Uh, during the forum, they were then now were aware of uh, being exposed to, oh, so the engagement was very effective uh, with the discussion with different uh, stronger represented uh, National Olympic Committee Athletes Commissions or the IFs. And they were able to then find out the available resources, uh, per se, the uh, Athletes 365 uh, network application, uh, the, the website that exists, and also the tools available, such as the Career Plus program. So this summarizes our uh, qualitative survey results. Great. So one thing that was very clear from all the findings that we had, the interviews, the surveys, it was that on the whole, athlete representatives actually have a very um, high perception of what the IOC does, the IOC AC does, and overall they're very highly satisfied with what's already being provided to them, especially when it comes to programs like Athlete 365 and Career Plus. Naturally, there is a discrepancy that we found in certain athlete commissions who tend to be more successful and more effective in meeting their objectives of engaging with athletes compared to others. Uh, and so what we did was, based on those findings, we tried to identify features that make those successful ACs a bit more effective. And based on the uh, three themes that Myung touched on, we tried to drill into each of these and figure out what it is that the IOC AC could do to A, continue supporting the work of the ACs, but also to give that bit of extra support to the ACs that just might not be there yet. Based on this, we developed a set of nine recommendations. Um, you have a copy of this in front of you. Due to time constraints, I won't be able to go through all of them, but we'll just quickly run through one of each and happy to discuss any of the others at the end of the presentation. The very first category that we're looking at is the access and awareness category. This category is basically looking at making sure that athletes and athlete representatives are not only aware of what resources and what programs the IOC has, but also know how to make the most of it and use it to its full potential. One of the biggest barriers that we touched on earlier is language, and that's what our very first recommendation looks at. It looks at IOCAC doing what it can to identify certain regions or certain target audiences that we're not currently <coughs> reaching. Because the reality is we're working in English and French, but there are many parts of the world where a common person will not speak English and will not speak French. And we had a great example that Myungwin touched on where the Argentinian AC took something that the IOC AC already had, they translated it into Spanish, and not only was that more accessible for their own athletes, but it also ended up helping other NOCs in the neighbouring region. The other thing that we identified was that athlete representatives who tend to be more engaged or participate more tend to be the ones that do speak English or French, and the ones that don't tend to be at a disadvantage because either they're not able to follow or they haven't received updates or that they're just not able to participate at the same level. So what we suggest we can do is we use the existing resources we have, the books, the publications, the web pages, and be able to replicate them in other languages using the resources we already have within our network. And we imagine that to be the athlete representatives as well as the continental associations having a big role to play in this recommendation. The second category we're looking at is focusing on stakeholders and how the ACs can better engage with them. Uh, one of the common concerns we had 
especially from ACs that are newly formed or have new newer membership, is that they're not sure how to connect with athletes outside of their own immediate network. So if you're an NOC uh, athlete representative and you have eight or 10 uh, members on your commission from different sports, there are still 30 or 40 or 50 other sports that you're not directly re engaging with on your commission. Similarly, if you're an IF and you're representing eight or 10 different countries, there are still 100 other countries that aren't being represented on your commission. So what we've proposed here is that uh, the IOCAC encourage ACs to have a more robust communication plan to involve the national federations. Uh, and in particular, we've suggested that we can do so by following the IOCAC model and their example, which is that each member on the AC is allocated a number of uh, athlete commissions that they're responsible for directly communicating with, uh, following up with, supporting. And that way, each athlete's commission has a direct communication link with their IOCAC. Similarly, because it's worked so well based on the feedback we had, we believe the ACs can then take this step one, one step forward and allocate their own members, two or three national federations that that member is responsible for, so that each athlete has a direct link to their athlete commission, even if they're not directly represented on that commission. And the last category we look at is governance, uh, looking at the internal functions of the athlete commissions. And one of the things we heard throughout uh, our surveys, uh, whether they were successful ACs or not so much, was that they all need more support, understandably. But what we did identify was that the ACs that did receive some sort of support from the NOC or IF, uh, normally in the forms of funding or being provided venues, they were the ones that tended to be better informed about what their objectives are, what the structure of their governing body is. And those that had a dedicated staff resource were able to actually focus on the actual task of getting out on the field and engaging with their athletes, rather than being bogged down in administrative duties like booking rooms or trying to organize elections and so on. So the one recommendation that we had in this category is looking at the IOC, encouraging the IFs and NOCs to support their ACs to the best of their ability and where possible provide a dedicated staff resource uh, to be able to look after the administrative duties so that the athlete representatives that are volunteering can do their objective of actually getting out on the field and engaging with their athletes. That is uh, an overview of what the recommendations aim to do. We're hoping that by implementing these, we can a, continue supporting the work of the ACs increasing the uptake of the IOC resources that we have and improve knowledge sharing. And of course, support uh, the objective of all the ACs, which is to make sure that the athlete is always at the center of the Olympic movement, that their voices are heard and are informing decision-making processes, and that we can improve the generations of coming athletes compared to what they were before, both on and off the field. That is an overall summary of our project, and we'd be happy to field any questions you may have, and we'd like to thank you for your time. Excellent presentation. Uh, we throw the floor open to questions.